Pesticide spray equipment should be calibrated at least once per production season and maintained regularly to ensure that you are consistently and uniformly applying the correct amount of material. There are six steps to properly calibrate a sprayer. Step one, preparations. Everyone involved in calibration activity should wear protective equipment. At a minimum, each participant needs chemical-resistant footwear, chemical-resistant coverall, splash protective eyewear, chemical-resistant gloves. Assemble all of the necessary tools before starting a calibration. 100-foot tape measure, flags, cones, or other method of marking a distance, two containers at least 128 fluid ounces, three pressure gauges that can measure up to 600 PSI, stopwatch, wrenches for adjusting equipment, brushes for cleaning nozzles and filters, paper and pen to record notes and measurements. The BASF Quick Calc application will help you make the calculations involved in calibrating a sprayer. It is available for both Apple and Android systems. Flush the entire sprayer system with clean water three times. If possible, use a commercial tank cleaner according to product instructions. Fill sprayer tanks with clean water. You will need at least three people to perform the calibration, one tractor operator, one record keeper, and one assistant to collect measurements. Before continuing with the calibration, record all relevant tractor information, including model number, tank volume, typical operating pressure and RPMs, bed width, number of beds covered by the sprayer and the number of nozzles per bed, as well as the type of nozzles currently being used. Step two, maintenance. The following maintenance steps should be conducted regularly throughout the production season. When conducting maintenance on your sprayer, be sure to document current conditions and any corrective actions taken. Verify that all main and secondary filters are in good condition and that they have no holes and are not clogged. Clean, repair, or replace filters if necessary. Check all hoses for cracks, leaks, and clogs. Clean, repair, or replace hoses if necessary. Verify that all nozzles across the boom match or that they are in a regular pattern. Replace any mismatched nozzles. Turn the sprayer onto typical operating pressure and verify that the nozzle output appears visually uniform. Clean clogged nozzles. Replace nozzles that are worn, damaged, or have otherwise irregular output. If more than three nozzles from any bed need to be replaced, replace all the nozzles across the boom. Don't forget to check the nozzle filters when replacing nozzles. Clean or replace them when necessary. Step three, confirm pressure uniformity. Refer to the factory specifications to confirm that your typical operating pressure is appropriate for the type of nozzle being used. Remove three nozzles across the boom and replace them with pressure gauges, one on the far right, one at the center, and one at the far left. Turn on the sprayer to typical operating pressure and verify that the pressure regulator is present and functioning. Repair or replace if not. Measure and record the pressure readings on the boom gauges. There should be no more than 10 PSI difference between the highest and lowest readings. If there is a difference greater than 10 PSI, make adjustments to the sprayer to achieve uniform boom pressure. If the pressure difference cannot be brought to within 10 PSI, do not continue to use the sprayer until it is repaired by a qualified mechanic. Notice any differences in pressure between the operator's pressure gauge and those on the boom. It may be necessary to replace the cabin pressure gauge if it will not read the same as the boom pressure gauges. Step four, verify nozzle output. Select 12 drops along the boom, four on the right side, four in the center, and four on the left. 
turn on the sprayer to typical operating pressure. Using a container in each hand, collect water from two of the selected drops for 30 seconds. Measure and record the amount of water collected during the 30 seconds and note the number of nozzles on each drop. Repeat the collection until the output of all 12 drops has been measured and recorded. The BASF Quick Calc app will help you determine if your nozzle output is within the acceptable range specified by the factory. Enter the amount of water from each collection into the app and follow its guidance for replacing nozzles. Replace any nozzles with outputs outside of the acceptable nozzle output range. If more than 25% of the nozzles tested are outside of the acceptable nozzle output range, replace all nozzles on the boom with new nozzles. Step 5. Determine application rate. In order to determine your application rate, you will need to calculate the tractor speed. Measure and mark a 100-foot straight track with flags or cones. Record the time it takes to drive the 100-foot track using the typical operating gear and RPMs while spraying at the typical pressure. Repeat the process and enter the two times into the BASF app to determine your tractor speed. Now that all measurements have been entered into the app, you will be able to calculate your application rate. If the actual application rate is within 10% of your desired application rate, your sprayer is calibrated. If not, further adjustments to equipment or operating procedure must be made to apply the desired gallons per acre. Step 6. Adjustments. If the actual application rate is higher than desired application rate, increase tractor speed by increasing RPMs or operating in a different gear, or decrease nozzle output by decreasing operating pressure and or changing nozzle type to a lower flow nozzle. If the actual application rate is lower than desired application rate, decrease the tractor speed by decreasing RPMs, operating in a different gear, or increase nozzle output by increasing operating pressure and or changing nozzle type to a higher flow nozzle. Any change to operating pressure or nozzle output will require an adjustment to operating speed to ensure correct application.